come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. In our quest for total world domination, you can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you found us, and hitting that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks, such as you. Um, These are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. (laughs) I did my late night voice again, sorry. (laughs) I was still in. We're going to slow it down. We're slowing it down. <laughs> hey, we're, we're how are you doing? All the, <laughs> none of us can hear the columns just like <laughs> hearing sex against this here right now. Uh, jazz. There you go. Uh, okay, so tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by... Sean! What melty treasure did we watch? Uh, we watched 2005's Paris Hilton's House of Wax. There's a lot of <laughs> yeah. preamble before the title. Yeah. <laughs> Directed by... Uh, how do you pronounce his first name? It is you, you're gonna Juame Colette Sarah. Own. I'm gonna say. Say it again. Juame Colette Sarah. He's Spanish, or yeah, he's a Spaniard. Yes. Yeah. All right. Juame we Colette would know Sarah. him from. Well, uh, when I picked the movie, I did not know that he's got a movie coming out like this week. That's yeah. out. Jungle oh. Cruise. Shut um, up. But he's done a lot more. The Shallows. He's he did a run of Liam Neeson action movies. The Liam Neeson action yeah. movies. Yeah, he's yeah. like half the Liam Neeson. Yeah, like basically. The computer run all night. And he's yeah, got a Disney movie coming out. He does. Good and he for did. Him. He also did Orphan. <laughs> oh, Orphan. <laughs> did Orphan. Stay tuned for Orphan eventually. I was right? say, yeah, that'll yeah. come at some point. Oh, it's been on my list for a long time. Yeah, we've mentioned him before on this, I believe. Mm-hmm. Like we've talked about him briefly, as it were. But yes. So he's made it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this was his first movie, though, right? First movie, yes. He had been doing, uh, he went to, I think, Columbia in California, I believe. So he went to film school. He was an editor. Mm-hmm. He came up through the system. He met Joel Silver, and Joel Silver is the one who was like, hey, you should direct this thing we're doing. We're, we're quote unquote, remaking Which House is of why Wax. He produced this. Yes. This is a Silver Pictures picture. Well, not uh, not, not not technically, not is it? No. no. He is a producer on it, but it's yeah. not it's a Silver a picture. It's Dark Castle. Yes. You know why Dark Castle is called Dark Castle? William Castle. Yes, they were originally going to remake a bunch of William Castle movies. You know how many they did? Three. Did they? I thought it was two. I think there's two very popular ones. I feel like we've said the same thing like five times. (laughs) I mean, probably. (laughs) On other shows? On other shows or just right now? Because there is no way that I knew the answer to that unless you told me before. (laughs) Okay, so (laughs) this is our third Dark Castle movie. Yes. You Uh, probably say it every time. (laughs) Because they all came out in this era. Yeah, in this order. Well, uh, no, the one we're missing is uh, Ghost Ship. But there's House on Haunted Hill, which Uh we did. Uh, 13 Ghosts, yep. yeah. which we did. I mean, let's be real. At some point, Sean is going to bring ghost shit. Yeah. You know what? The Dark Castle math, not looking good. It's, no. I mean, no. I, and I've never seen Ghost Ship, but I mean, you know, that doesn't stop and me before. And that's why you're so. going to bring it. Yeah. So. I've never seen this. Let's check it out. <laughs> but I really remember not wanting to watch that movie, so it'll yeah. be a hard Gothica one to bring. Gothica was the one after Oh, I've seen Gothica. And they did Rock and Roll, though, their Guy Ritchie movie. I do like that movie. Yeah. yeah. And they spun off, basically, out of horror, but I think they only did yes. two William Castle remakes. Yes. Um Okay, so and Joel Silver obviously is the producer on this with Robert Zemeckis, Zemeckis right? Yes. Because those guys uh, like horror movies and had done like the Tales from the Crypt TV show. It always surprises me to see Zemeckis pop up on stuff like this. Yeah, remember wasn't he a producer on the Frighteners, which yeah. we also did on this show? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, I don't know. Just knowing that guy's career to date now and all the weird shit he's done in the past. 20 years i'm really not that surprised look yeah. at all these terrible movies he makes now are you surprised I mean, he had a hand that's in any true of this? and i'll bet that like i'll bet it's probably connected through joel silver mm-hmm. yeah like that's gonna end like maybe um he knew like the production designer like that's how yeah Zemeckis is are, involved. I mean, all of these are like well budgeted movies yes uh, this was 40 million in okay 40 itself. okay yeah. yeah and most of them well i mean i guess uh up till maybe Gothica, right? I mean, if you look at House on Haunted Hill, 13 Ghosts, and Ghost Ship, and this, they're all centered around architecture. Like, that is mm-hmm. their main, like, the production department spent a fuckload of money yeah. <laughs> on designing a thing. Because, I mean, they had to be, like, the pitch at some meeting for this, like, okay, we're going to we're gonna do a remake of House of Wax. Uh, we're just going to say that, but picture this. The house is actually made 
wax. That's <laughs> it. And you know, he slammed the table and sat back. Like, yeah, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> And, that was the and pitch. then at the end of the very long table is a guy with a big cigar just sitting there not saying anything, just smoking. And is this the Hudsucker proxy? Is yeah. That- yeah. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I like it. It's also elf. I like what yeah. like, I like yeah. where you're going, kid. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. 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 Brilliant. <laughs> That's how it feels like. It I know probably... who can stop. Paris Hilton. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Paris Hilton's in this movie. Paris, Paris Hilton. I mean, she's on, like, this was Paris Hilton's movie. She's on the, she is she the poster. Is, she, she is, is the, the poster. Okay, yeah. yeah, I know. I had never seen this movie, and the only thing I knew about it was it's the Paris Hilton movie. Yeah. Yes. The that's Paris how, Hilton movie. That's like how it was it marketed. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Especially, specifically, I mean, we talked about this off mic, but there was a See Paris Die campaign, like, campaign yeah. for right. this. Right. I like, remember that. Yeah. One of the big advantages is, like, you want to see Paris Hilton die? Come see yeah, our movie. But she was like all for like yeah. it, you know she was participating in because that. Yeah. the money. I'm doing the money, money yeah. to, the, Colin. It's money. It's yeah. all when, money. When it's simple here's, life. Like yeah. we're in the middle. Yeah, here's of the thing. Work. This That's is peak there. Paris Hilton. Yeah. Like, yeah. Here's the thing. This is Paris, peak everybody. Paris in this Hilton. Movie. Ridiculous. Not stupid. Mm-mm. She capitalized on all of her dumb shit. Yeah, she's all made a it. fuck it's ton of money off of it. Or she's listening to the right people. Whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. mm-hmm. I think she be, uh, like I don't remember. It does help that her family is Hilton's, yeah. and it helps that she yeah, she was born into like yeah. extreme generational wealth. Yeah. Like, yes. and it helps that she genuinely doesn't give a shit what anyone thinks of her. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was after that she became like a music star, right? Wasn't well, album? Well, music no, star. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Colin, Colin, Colin. She had Colin. one single that Let's was terrible. Okay, okay, okay. Unless, unless Colin's <laughs> revealing something about himself right no, now. No, no, okay. I haven't. I Colin, heard like, Colin has it's... a vinyl of Stars Are Blind. Right. Is that oh what it's called? Oh my God, that is what it's called. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's no. the single. I can okay. almost hear it in my it's, head. So there wasn't like an album or something like that. She didn't have a well, recording she did. career. Okay, no, she was not. She tried. She, she tried. This like, is where they the, the era where they all tried. Like all so. rich like kids everybody do. Was doing it. Yeah. Hollywood was, is their fucking playground. But Colin. this was totally brought back recently in a very fantastic uh, scene in uh, a promising young woman when they were in the farm. Has anyone seen this? Oh, I haven't yeah. seen it. Yeah, 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 when they're in the pharmacy singing to Paris Hilton, and you're like, I fucking forgot Paris Hilton had a song. But that, <laughs> but that scene is brilliant. That's funny. Yeah. But I like the fact that she was so reviled as a cultural phenomenon. I think yeah. because of like, well, she's famous for being famous, right? And yeah. I, like I said, Simple Life, the reality show with her and uh, yeah. Nicole Richie. Yeah, but even famous. like, yeah. how'd she get that show? Is because she started she off as a model, but she started off as a model because she came from a rich right. family. Yeah. Right, it and all goes of back this, to being born it's, rich. It's that, right. it's that like Kardashian. Generation. Well, it's all the well, reality. She's TV. actually responsible the... for the Kardashians. Oh, I know. I know. There... Kim Kardashian yeah, yeah. was her assistant. Yeah. And this is the uh, the height of the rich kids, like the generational kids, get their own reality the club shows. Kids. Like the broke yeah. kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are, or there's other ones. There's. Well, this is like early reality TV, so we're just kind of giving everyone a show yes. and seeing what sticks. Yes. Because yeah. at this point, you can make a reality star out of anybody. Yes. So, yeah. So, um, so they're just kind of like, oh, you're tangentially related to somebody here. Have a show. Have a show. Have a right. show. You're you rich know? and you just do yeah. random shit. Yeah. Here's a show. It's also yeah. like peak reality television. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of things going on. I guess that we got it because there's like, <laughs> you know, in even there's watching a lot this happening. movie. Yeah, there's there's remake fever, there's found footage, yep. there's the the CW like peak TV. I mean, oh, like, all this that. is Synergy the movie. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like yeah, it incorporates yeah, Synergy this, the movie. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is like someone challenged someone to be like, how much crossover Synergy like promotion can you do in yeah. one movie? How many yeah. we, how many of them can we get? In <laughs> yeah, one movie? you're all they're it. all headed toward a collision course in the year 2005. Yeah. Yeah. with mm-hmm. House of Wax, House yeah. of Wax. So we did uh, we did an episode on the original House of Wax. Has no bearing at all on the plot of this movie. That one's about a, ma- a sculptor who loses his wax museum, becomes crazy, gets disfigured, turns people into wax. And sounds uh, exactly like this movie. <laughs> but, I mean, there's there's those elements are in this movie. Wait, we did House of Wax. Yeah, that was. A long, I was not here was a while ago. Oh, I was gonna say, okay, yeah. Okay. yeah, Vincent Price was in it. Gotcha. So of course, one of the characters here is named Vincent. But the primary, uh, like, as we were watching it tonight. It seemed like the at least visual aesthetic of this movie is inspired the most by Texas, Texas Chainsaw. Chainsaw. Yeah. This yeah. is a Texas Chainsaw remake. This I called. Is not it, I, I leaned wax. over to Colin Millis. I said, "This is the Texas Chainsaw Waxicker," and then I immediately apologized for <laughs> what I said, the movie, everything, there my are, whole life. There are moments of like teasing torture porn too, which mm-hmm. is like yeah. also mm-hmm. happening. Yeah. Another that trend. Yeah, that's yeah, another that's right. trend that's happening. Another, yeah, yeah, yeah. another yeah. part of the synergy is let's put yeah, a little bit all, of torture porn in it. This, yeah, I think this is big. Yeah, because uh, when was Hostel? Uh, well, there was the Texas Chainsaw. Is that the Chainsaw, same year? 
I think Hostel was 05. I think uh, Texas oh, wow. Chainsaw. But the first was Saw 03. was what, 2003? 03. So, that yeah. was when the, the Texas Chainsaw remake came yep. out. The yep. Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake basically started, it feels to me, the whole reboot, remake uh, subgenre that went on for ever. It's well, still going on. Is it? I mean, it went on. Colin, not, think, not with Colin, as much fervor, think of how I many guess, but... Blumhouse re- remakes are happening right now. Firestarter, Candyman, we, Halloween, we're in the, the Craft, uh, like we're in the resurgence Black of it. Christmas. When horror, well, when horror as it has had a resurgence, like lately, when that happens again, the remakes start up again and all that mm. stuff. Right, but I'm, but we can always tie it back to two studios. Right now it's Blumhouse. Back then it was Platinum Blum. Dunes. You yes. know, like Dark Castle had a little hand in it, but like we saw that the wheels wobbled real quickly and then they they jumped off that train. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. you're saying Platinum Dunes because they they had the major. They had ones all of Friday them. Friday the 13th. They had Nightmare on Elm Street, which we did on the, the Hitcher. Show. They did the Hitcher. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did they, did, did they <laughs> Thank do? Thank you, Sean. You're did, welcome. Did they do Amityville too? Yeah, they did Amityville. Uh, yeah, so uh, there it is. Um, okay, so we're at peak remake fever. And I think Amityville says, is the same year. Probably, mm-hmm. yeah, right. Like, oh, five, yeah, somewhere. I mean, like, it's this not, is in my heart. It feels the like the year is. that they're doing all this stuff. Uh, and somebody says, "Hey, we got to m- remake uh, House of Wax for some bizarre reason." But I mean, that's you know, like, oh, the kids will remember House of Wax. Yeah, that nineteen fifty three <laughs> movie. They'll all remember that one, <laughs> right? Um, but it is. I mean, come on. Uh, it's. I think it's ripe for. Like but, those are the movies that are ripe for ripe like for the plucking, but sure, like, yes. it, it's a it's a cultural subconscious thing, right? Because like I've always known wax museums are a thing, yes. whether or not I've seen House of Wax or not. I don't. I, I've never been to one, but yet I know really? it's a thing. You oh, know well. what I'm saying? And, like, and I think that it's a cultural th- yeah. thing. And that's exactly why. I mean, like you're basically the character in the yeah. movie. Just like, oh, I've heard of wax museums. I've never yeah. been to one. I'm yeah. gonna go barge into every sure. door in. I'm this gonna be in e this entire <laughs> yeah, town. The entire <laughs> movie is right. breaking and entering. Yeah. Wow, it was, um, well, this one was written by the uh, guys who later did The Conjuring. The, it was a Carrie and what's his name? Hayes. Chad. Chad and Carrie The Hayes. twins from Rad? That's oh, right. right. In the movie Rad. There's so oh many God. twins oh in this God, goddamn movie. All right. Dude, I forgot about Everything that. goes twins. back to Rad. Oh, my God. I oh my forgot. God. I They're, forgot about Holly, that. Holly, how are you feeling? They're twins? I'm panicking. Alicia Cuthbert and Chad Michael Murray supposed to be twins? The other two are twins in I this know. movie? No, I, I'm panicking. And, and while we were watching this movie... My friend sent me a meme about twins. Like, it was haunting me tonight. I think your only reprieve is that nobody was identical, like, standing yeah. next to each yeah. other. That's yeah. the only yeah. reprieve like, you got for this. Like, I was in panic mode, but it never hit, like, peak right. panic. You're like, yeah. oh, my God, they're standing next to each other? Like, if anyone looked exact, <laughs> like, if, like the nothing but trouble twins, yeah. like, I would have been throwing up, throwing up upstairs. Yeah. yeah. Well, we had conjoined twins in this movie. Right? We did, but going. it was so quick. It looked like a very poorly photoshopped bad. photo. <laughs> Yeah. Didn't look comfortable. No. no. Um, and I did like that they kept like coming back to it, like well, the like the slice through the wax babies, and <laughs> yeah. at the end when they like when he falls on top of him, and this like, I like yeah, that they it's kept like thematically to it. they're yeah. like we're gonna somehow find a way. God, to get this these movie two guys so hits you over. There's the head. so oh, yeah. much so going subtle. on in this movie. <laughs> so subtle. Oh, this might be the dumbest assortment of characters I've ever seen. <laughs> now, why so do you stupid. say that? Because they like they are getting hit over the head with the most like obtuse horror movie tropes, and they just keep blowing right past it like does that i mean is that because it's like okay so we're we're obviously we're post scream at this point so you're supposed to know that you're in a in a horror movie Mm -hmm. when you're in a horror movie but these characters are like no no we're going back old school well texas chainsaw kind of opened the door to that it takes place in the past this one takes place in the present but it's like they go through all these things that are you know like horror movie cliches and don't if you if you're camping and some dude in a pickup truck comes up and menaces your camp, right? And then you piss him off by breaking his uh, headlight. Yeah. Then you go to sleep there for and the just, night, like what? Yeah, the, I'm. You yep. know, oh, like you show <laughs> him, you. That's a twenty-two-year-old badass. Is this? He's someone, not coming back for you. Is this someone's property? There was no gate. The, yeah. yeah. No, it was. He was emphatic. Can't be. There was no gate. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing, Colin. They're not even like just innocently naive they're antagonistic menaces to this entire town and then blowing past the re- they're antagonizing people and then blowing past their reaction to being antagonized you know yeah, yeah they are barging through this yeah. movie yeah. all right well let's we talk- own this town let's talk <laughs> yeah. about this okay so you're talking about specifically like uh um what's his uh, jared padalecki right his character is the most egregious offender of this right no, Chad Michael no, Murray. I think they're okay. both. They're all pretty. 
pretty equal. But Chad Michael yeah. Murray's the established bad boy wild yes. card. So right, yes. I think, yeah, and there's definitely different motivations. He's like, well, I need to get in there. So that Padalecki's yeah. just going on like, it looks so real. Yeah, yeah. like that's his reaction to everything. Well, he, plays, well, he plays the same character in everything he yeah. does. <laughs> and and this is one of the the synergy points, right? Is Jared Padalecki is on the CW. He just got off of Gilmore Girls on the CW. Now he's going to Supernatural. Supernatural. Yep. Yeah. And then you got Chad Michael Murray's on One Tree Hill on the CW. Was right on now. Gilmore Girls. Was on yeah. Gilmore yeah. Girls, and then left to go to One Tree Hill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Because yeah. the cast also has Alicia Cuthbert. Alicia. Yeah. Alicia. Alicia Cuthbert, mm-hmm. who was in Twenty Four, then uh, the she girl next door. briefly girl next door. had a movie career, right? Because mm-hmm. she was in Captivity. Anybody? anybody oh, yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah. I forgot a about that part movie. In Love Actually. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, that's did, right. Yes. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. And then I don't know what happened to her. I think mm-hmm. she was on a couple of CW TV shows and parts as well. I she, believe she had. Is she I feel still like, around? I feel like she probably does like TNT or USA Originals or something. Okay. Something well, like wait. Hallmark or some shit. Hallmark. Yeah. yeah. Probably. I feel like she has to. You guys are more plugged into this than me. So where the 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 people who are in this. Because I only know them from like you know this movie sure. or something. Uh, how many of them are still like <laughs> Chad Michael Murray still out there doing stuff? Uh, somewhere I haven't seen for a while. Right, uh, but um, Padalecki, Padalecki went on for Padalecki's been birth. on the CW for almost twenty years. Yeah. yeah, and he was also in the Friday the Thirteenth remake. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, yep, he was. Yep, he's, he, do, he's doing. Was it fucking uh, Walker? Walker, Walker, Texas Walker. Ranger. Yeah, he's, he's Walker, Walker yeah. Texas Ranger. Yeah, so he'll <laughs> so he will he will be employed. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's oh, yeah. Did Walker. you not know this? No, I didn't know he was oh the God. lead. Yeah, oh, Colin, Walker. it's terrible. <laughs> the the promo they showed for it was clearly all from one episode. Like they showed like a season promo that was just one episode chopped up. It's bad. Okay. It's oh, Colin, it's one it. of those where they don't have like <laughs> money for a set, so everything's just dark behind the actor. It's one of those or kind of field. things. Yeah, or in a field. <laughs> it it happens at night a lot. The trailers I see for Walker are always at night. I just um I, if anyone that's listening, if you've watched this show, I don't know who the show's for. It's on the CW. So yeah. it's Walker, <laughs> Texas it's Ranger. The same people they're trying to get the for the MacGyver remake. That, that young audience. We're gonna make MacGyver and yeah. sexy. We gotta make Walker sexy. <laughs> How you get sexier than Chuck Norris, I don't know, but Oh, you're going with, with Padalecki. I was a, it was a joke. J- joke Alex. Jared Padalecki is going to be on the CW till he dies. Yeah, like well, till I mean, he dies. This he's is got his an third... audience there. They're probably paying yeah. him good. Well, yeah, but it's, can you imagine the sad day when he when he starts having to play the dad on a show? Right, exactly. He's going to be so bummed. <laughs> he's been on it since he was like what eighteen. Like, yeah, he's not so... a dad in Walker, is he? No, oh well, god, I mean, don't no, say I mean, he's still the star. He's yeah. still the star. There's, okay, season yeah. probably two. Like, I'm your daughter. That yeah. episode will hand off like, to Walker Junior. Transitory period of his career. When it becomes like fucking Hannah Walker. Yeah. You know, yeah. young detective or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, yeah, like that, like that shitty Sherlock Holmes <laughs> right. with Kelly yeah. Bobby Brown and Henry Cavill. Oh, right. yeah. That nobody has watched, right? Did you say Hannah Walker. <laughs> yeah. I did. Dude, they got that. They got Anola Holmes. It's totally possible. Yeah, wow. <laughs> we live in a world where that will probably happen. Wow. So, since we've planned out the CW's next ten years, and yeah, shows, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, which copyright twenty twenty one Saturday Night Freak Show? Hannah Walker. Give me that money. He's Give clearly going to have a, a long career there. You yeah. know what? Uh, actually, you know, I will keep him working forever, Colin. I will write it. I will yeah? write it forever. That big of a Jared Pat. Well, I know that they have like a massive. Like cult following, there's people. Who follow oh them. yeah, so, yeah. we'll Massive. we'll die yeah, with them and that show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the other movie that uh, so this uh, what we were saying this is a movie that says it's a you know, remake of the House of Wax, but it's actually like uncredited, right? Based on a movie that we watched on this show. What movie, I think, Colin? Is it's tourist it's trap? Tourist it's trap. tourist trap. Yeah. Okay. It is tourist trap. Much less mannequin orgies in this one, unfortunately. Like that's unfortunately. a knock against this movie. No, no mannequin orgies. Yeah. Well, this that one, one so. and the there's a there's a twin twist in I'd in stop. tourist trap that in this one they actually have separate twins. Uh, there's also like a psychic thing going on in tourist trap, which makes yep. kind of nuts. Um, yeah, but the only thing that i was sitting there watching this tonight and like as we're watching this is like a two hour thriller it slash is. slasher it takes movie. a long time to set up stupid backstory but but <laughs> when you because i couldn't help compare it to tourist trap it's yeah, like truly. tourist trap got there faster yes, you know? yes like, it did. Much, like weren't was an opening scene shit flying around a room yeah like, yeah were, well you have to have your cold open where something happens yeah. in this one and this one it's child abuse yeah, it's a, it's a, which was <laughs> Sean, like you said, it's a Rob Zombie movie. It is. It's a big it theme. Also, another big theme in the 2000s. Like, like you said, this is how you make a killer. You have to abuse them as a child and tape them. They down have to, to their... be white trash that yeah. are abusive. Yep. That's yep. that's everyone's backstory there's, in the 2000s. There's always a feeding table with well, chains on it. Yeah, always. Yeah. To be fair, it is Florida. 
Uh, yeah. true. <laughs> was it Florida? Yeah. Okay. I know it was filmed in Australia, but it was, yes. it was Florida. supposed to be in Florida. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess that's part of those movies, right? They're always in the, in the 2000s. It seems like we were always looking at like, what was the causes of yes. uh, right. violence or why, you know, yes. uh, why do these it can't people just be creepy this way? Or right. Or yeah. can't just be have no reason for killing. Mm-hmm. Like we need to delve into the psychology of these killers. Yeah. By giving it's it'll be, scene. It's it'll be that's scarier. Still, that's still a fucking theme going on today with all these goddamn prequels and backstories. Yeah, it is. Joker. Cruella, come on! I don't Why need it. Think, I don't right. need it. We're still there. Yep. But the question is: Does that scene at the beginning like need to be in the movie? No, 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 no. Okay, because he tells the story later. Right. Okay. There's my point. I guess yeah. we're gonna get that information well, later. And yeah. this scene deliberately doesn't like takes great pains to not show anyone's face, mm-hmm. which yeah. is important later. Because on. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a twist. Which is though, the twin that is. I the will say though, twin. this scene sets up like way more of a feeling than any of the back shit story with our main characters. Okay. So getting into the movie, you're like, I've got an atmosphere now. Yeah. From this scene going forward. Yeah, all the bullshit with the main characters. I'm like, I don't get, I don't care about any. So what are they now. doing? How do we, how are we introduced to them? <laughs> and then Holly stared for 20 minutes. They're going to a football game. They are. Yeah. They're, they're in, oh yeah. yeah. They're going to a football game. None right. of this. Okay. I'm sorry. No, no football game is worth any of this shit. What, and did they ever like mention what game is it like NFL? Is it college? Like what? Is I think it? it's a college. Game. I think it's a co- which it's makes even like New Orleans. It's the most even important less... game of our lives. Yeah. Damn it! But why? Apparently. None of them are playing. None of them are playing. No, they don't it, even have tickets. But no. in the South, football, college football is like a gigantic. That's true, not in Florida. Florida's mm, big. Yeah, the Florida all Gator. Florida, Florida, Florida big. Gators. They're big in <laughs> college football. Big. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. All right, so they're on their way to the game because, I mean, you're always on your way to somewhere. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Uh, you know, it reminded me for some reason of Wrong Turn. I was just going to say, yeah. I'm like, well, there's a reason oh, Wrong Turn right. is called Wrong Turn yeah, because, because it happens in every fucking yeah, movie. Because they spend about 20 minutes freestyle rapping and playing with a GPS. Because we are on the burgeoning <laughs> front of technology yeah, as well. Yeah. This is the other part of the synergy. Technology is coming to life They've at this point. They've got cell phones. They've got Nokia cell phones. They have GPS. Camcorders. Like, he just got yes. a new GPS. Yeah, like we were saying when we were watching this movie, do you guys remember when you had to leave your house with your phone, your iPod or MP3 player, and your digital camera. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. always having a digital camera just around the your strap. Wrist. Yeah. <laughs> always had a wrist strap. <laughs> Guys, you got my camera. Yeah. <laughs> it's in a cool blue color, too. <laughs> that was this era. God, yeah, yeah. It was oh. weird watching it when they're like, I got to, you know, we're on our phones, but we got to pull out our camera to actually see yeah. what's going on. I'm pretty sure this is the year I bought my iPod. Mm-hmm. Like, this I mean, was probably. the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I still have it. When do you remember, like, how. Like per- digital cameras would have like celebrities endorsing them too. Like the Canon Power Shot always had someone that was yeah. like endorsing yeah. it. You know, it's like you don't see that shit at all. <laughs> New commercial like this one on your fucking phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now it's just we got nothing to sell anymore. You yeah. got all your There's shit. a new iPhone out. Yeah, bye. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, like tourist trap, they end up uh like taking a detour. So I was wondering, all right, this is the way I read it that because uh, the uh, Duder's GPS tells him. Hey, we're going to take a shortcut to get to the game. Mm -hmm. And then they come upon a detour. So the detour was set there by the, you know, as we find out, the the crazy people, right? As as it always is. Another. It always is. Always. Because that's not said, but we're just assuming that that's where it goes. And then they end up camping and having a party as like these parties are always a lot more exciting than the parties I have where we just kind of sit around (laughs) a fire and talk. But they're like, it always looks like. (laughs) Now, now that we live in the age of influencers, it looks like an influencer party. Like they're all, it feels like they're all posing. They're having a good time. Oh, I'm gonna chase you with the camera yeah. because we're having a good time camping. Oh, I miss pre-influencer internet. <laughs> right? Isn't that? <laughs> I miss that's the first it. Thing that yeah. comes to my mind watching this because it's so how, ingrained how, now. How big was the internet in uh, in twenty? I mean, it was big. MySpace I mean, was at its peak. Yeah, that's right. You would leave your house with an away message on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Aim. Yeah. <laughs> Aim and and MySpace were. Where it was only downhill from here. They didn't know it yet. People they didn't got, know it yet. Yeah. But friendships were broken over top eight. Yeah. <laughs> no, very true. Yeah. Yeah. MySpace would publicly ask you to rank your friends. Yeah. And f- oh, yeah. 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 It would. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you're what? mad at something, you'd move them down. <laughs> yeah. It was a weird time. And Facebook actually had like the wall where you could pin shit. You yep. remember pins? Yeah. yeah. Like, actual get pins. into Facebook. Yes. But yeah. no, this was the time when you had to have a college email address. Yeah. yeah. Facebook. My Facebook is still under my college email Mine address too. because yes. I, that's how, when I joined was when I was in college. And you <laughs> yeah. Had to have so that's one. a 17 oh, year old de- email address. I definitely deleted mine at some point and re signed up for it. So. Mm. Nope. Same nope. one. Yeah. But I did get it when I was in college for yeah. the first time. Yeah. Mm hmm. This is the ultimate time capsule movie. It, like, I think it really is. It, 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 it shoves like so much the, of it the 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, who knew? Because well, of the synergy. It's yeah. a time capsule. But they end up uh, like they end up because they're camping next to like this uh, roadkill pit. It turns out that uh, right, that of course <laughs> you have to go put your hands into. Pit. Okay, is this how? Is this really how they handle roadkill? Like in real life, do no. they just shovel it all into well, a pit somewhere? I think it depends on like if you're in the uh, deliverance well. areas. And I think this might be because think... they don't have a, a con- animal control or yeah, I was services like, I think to come animal scrape con- it off the road. I was say, I think animal control typically comes what, in. They would. Yeah. What do they do with it? An though? incinerator. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, so. yeah. I think we're supposed to believe again. This is like backwoods country somehow that they've ended up in. And right. Then... And these and these are the only the ones that weren't uh, fresh. Those right. were yeah. taken home for food. I know, because right. that's what I was saying. Like, uh, they would just take them home and eat them. Well, and I know, I know in some states, in some states, they take the roadkill and they donate it to, like, zoos and wildlife shelters and stuff yeah, for food. Sense. But out so. here, there's a dude who just wanders around in his truck and, like, throws all this roadkill on the back of his uh, pickup, brings it, dumps for, it into the For what thing. reason? Uh, Maybe he's going, wasn't there a roadkill what? cafe? Like, knowing what we know for you this kill whole... it, we grill it? Wasn't that a thing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> because, the, like, clearly he's not, this isn't what he's doing for a living. This is no. just what he does, like, all day long. He has nothing else to do. It's like I, I understand, like, he stops and checks to see if it's, like, still good. If it's still good, he'll take it with him. But if it's not, why not just leave it? That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. is, is, is this part of, like, the setup? Like, is this in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Hitchhiker? Is this this movie's version of it? It seems too coincidental. I think so. You know, like... Yeah. Seems too coincidental for because, it to like, be. this is another character who doesn't really need to be in the movie. Exactly, at all. Like, he cut this whole thing out. But yeah. he, uh, he's you know this good old boy who ends up offering to help them out, right? And so there's this big tension sequence that's set up because the kids, city folks, right, the city slickers, mm-hmm. misinterpret everything that he does because he's. It's grimy. like Tucker and Dale versus yeah, Evil. Yeah. It's exactly yeah. like that movie. But that's why I was like, because I was listening when you guys were. I was like, is there like all the red flags are saying that this guy is the the killer? Or, you and know, these or characters something. don't know notice any of them. Like, well, they're they're distrustful they're, of them and all. They're uneasy, like, but I mean, who wouldn't? Yeah, be they like, seem very uneasy. Him, from the, but they still get in his car. Yeah, yeah. this is the thing. We're just like, just based on smell alone. Yeah. I couldn't well, do it. Well, like, and like, I'm sorry. Like, I don't think we've touched on how gross this like pit of yeah. No, we have, we oh, need to skip over this pit. Of, Tom, like, we, we need gotta... decomposing carcasses. Yeah, like, they they smell it from their campground, and they yeah. decide to go after it. Yeah, for follow fun, the smell. Yeah, as it were. Well, the check you got to see what it is. Do you though? Think, if there's yeah, a giant, I usually move in the opposite direction. Yeah, doesn't get away from the smell. There's a bad smell outside. I don't need to know what it is. No, I would rather. And then no. the way you go, and then you fall into it head first don't, and put your hands all in to. it. And you can't get out because you're on the slope and your it's fingers. Like are... Okay, that was death. effectively so. gross, though. Like, Very. I was, yeah, like, it's like so disgusting. Squishy, gooey quicksand of death. Yeah. Okay, yes. so, but this is where the movie's but, working is with all of this, like, yes, gooey, gross, gross. stuff. Yeah. The griminess definitely comes through. But as you uh, said earlier, Holly and Michaela, what was the purpose of this scene yeah, in this right. pit? Oh, uh, the purpose is to get <laughs> Alicia Cuthbert out of her. Two covered shirt, yes, and right. get Chad Michael Murray shirtless. Yeah, which like I honestly, I applaud the way they were able to make this happen because I think like <laughs> it makes more sense than most things they could have come up with. Right. I think sure. you know, like, but it's to get one. I mean, it's to get two people shirtless, as it were. Also yeah. to get Alicia Cuthbert, like I said, in, into in the a white uh, tank top, into yeah. the uniform yeah. of the final girl yeah. of, the, of the aughts. Did we yeah. mention right. that Chad Michael Murray in this is playing her brother? Not right. her, not her boyfriend right. and or lover. But as some scenes later, they have a weird sexual chemistry. Weird though. chemistry. Yeah. Well, why do you say? That? I mean, I because they're so both too, too why sexy. Why you because Colin? like they just like the way they like interact with each other doesn't feel brother sister. Yeah, especially there's a couple scenes where they're like close and looking at each other. Like, it definitely I'm not feels like anything happen it definitely to you. feels like that couple in a movie. Like the whole movie, they kind of hate each other. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know they're into each other. Right. It's like that, but they're brother and sister. And and, and earlier when we're at the campsite and we get his whole like bad boy wild card backstory that goes on for okay it for felt so long. goes on for so long the scene is so long like she literally describes his whole rap sheet to us which i'm like you could just tell us the car theft that's all we need to know boom done mm-hmm. we don't need his entire backstory yeah. but she keeps going and she's like and then you did this and it was someone else's fault and then you did this and it was someone else's fault and she said that what six or seven times yeah mm-hmm. it keeps and going. it felt like that scene in sphere when queen La- queen latifah's looking at the jellyfish and she's like oh look at that oh look at that and yeah. you think like I think the actor in that moment thinks they're going to edit this down and like so they yeah. just keep going yeah. until they call cut and yeah. they don't they use the whole thing cuz that's what it feels like yeah. she just keeps going and then and then she literally says and then and I was like okay we get it he's a bad boy you right. can stop 
Yeah, because there's right. an implication Subtlety. that she also has like some kind of uh, criminal past because uh, he says that she's pretending to be somebody else and she's hooked up with college dude Wade, which is uh, Jared Padalecki. Right. But um, there's uh, like a lot of the characters in all the movies of this period of time kind of like do this kind of thing, it seems like, where they have like these characters who are, they're explaining a lot about who they are, but like I never really get it to the point where I'm like, well, this person would say this in this situation if this suddenly popped up in front of them. You know what I mean? Right. Like, But you're hearing a lot of like, they have a rap sheet. So I know that they're... A- they're literally telling you. Yeah. 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 But what does that have to do with how they're going to react to things later? Right. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing I heard about her possibly being, you know, in in into crime in the past that affects how she sh- ends up in this No, movie. but I, I think with Chad Michael Murray's character, it's to be like, he's unpredictable and he's got like a temper. So he's going to like go, like you know, like how he throws the bottle at the truck, you know, for no reason, you know? Yeah. That kind of stuff is to be like, he's going to antagonize in any situation. Mm-hmm. He's going to be on the offense. Well, there's also a scene, I think, with the truck, right? When the, the truck pulls up and everybody's yelling at him because I saw the gray, right? He mm-hmm. assumes uh, he assumes the uh, alpha position. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. out in front. He's defending the group. Which is bold because you're just <laughs> basically challenging that car to run over you. Yeah. You know, just like shoot you. Yeah. From but they're, they're making at. him out to be like, he's the he's the bad guy of the group. Right. Uh, um, we're supposed to go. The go- I guess that's what they're doing. Jared Padalecki is the good guy. Yeah. He's the one who deserves to live. Which is the role the he plays in movie. everything. Yeah, he's sure. always the good choice. Yeah. Against the bad choice. Always. Always. Yeah. Maybe it's in his contract. Maybe it's like a Vin <laughs> Diesel rock thing. Like I can't instead of like. I get this many punches in a fight. It's I always have to be the good choice. Unless there's that show or movie out there where he, where he tried to be the bad guy and just he can't well, do it. There's like, a that's whole season on Supernatural when he's possessed by a, de- a demon. How's yeah, that, yeah, is a good, is he a good bad guy. <laughs> I mean, I'm curious because I've only seen him in like these kind he's of parts. Just like, I mean, smarmy. <laughs> there's like <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. I don't think he can fully do yeah, it. He's there's like kinda... 15 seasons of Supernatural, are, so yeah. they yeah. cover everything. Yeah, they went a ton. For, yeah. There's a ton. Well, I mean, I guess uh, three of us had seen it before. Uh, Holly, this was your first time. Oh, first I mean, time. basically, the rest of you I mean, said yeah, you hadn't seen it for like 16 years. Yeah, I haven't, haven't seen, seen it since. I saw it in time. theaters, and I haven't seen it since. Was it strange? Were you surprised by the fact that they uh, promoted the Chad Michael Murray bad boy character to, like, uh, you know, one of the two survivors at the end of the movie? No, not at all. Okay. So it wasn't ever a question, this guy's going to make it, and the other guy's going to... I, th- I think it was because Chad Michael Murray was the more established one at the time. Padalecki was just yeah, starting we we his get, big thing okay. that year. We didn't get much from him. So I was like, okay, well, if we don't need that much of a story, he's you not going to be around. You right. can't kill both your CW right, actors. Right, one right, of them right, has right, to make it. you got to make yeah. a choice. Yeah. Yeah. This time, Chad, yeah. Michael, Chad Michael was the... Uh, <laughs> Chad Michael Murray was the at the time was at the time. more popular. Yeah, wasn't, yeah. wasn't Freaky Friday the year before this, yeah, too? So he's got One Tree Hill and Freaky Friday. Yeah, he's on the peak of Chad Michael Murray right now. He was a huge heartthrob at the time. Jared like he was like becoming more of a heartthrob. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think now Friday the Thirteenth was his movie. Yeah, right? well, and- okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah, he so- wasn't there. He still had Bieber haircut as of this time, <laughs> right? Yeah, obviously, Which Chad Michael Murray was the badass because he had but, the. Uh, but also yeah. with Chad Michael Murray, like I could tell what they were trying to do was trying to make it like this is his shot to like redeem himself and mm-hmm. like be yeah. the, be the savior oh, yeah. older brother. Yeah. 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 Be the I'll savior brother. I'll actually step up and not be a fucking yeah. irresponsible I'm not sure once. it was executed in a great no, way. I don't think it was. <laughs> no. <laughs> the truth. No. It's like, I see where you're going, but it's, it's not working. Well, they end up, uh, I mean, I guess because, uh, again, they, I, 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 unless there's, unless you see that scene at the very end of the movie, that basically identifies the the other the whatever the 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 guy who's picking up all the roadkill mm-hmm. as the third the hitherto unmentioned third brother. What a shoehorn fucking <laughs> Yeah, there was a third brother. Who are like, you talking oh, to? Who's I the don't know. Sh- sheriff? I don't know if you heard. <laughs> Shock ending. Uh but I mean other than that, it's like that, you know, you could read that scene as like this guy's trying to be friendly, they're you know, uh being kind of rude to him because they assume right. they're misinterpreting everything that he does. And so they end up because somebody is apparently in the middle of the night breaks into their campsite and cuts a um, a belt, fan belt. yeah, a fan, fan belt. belt on the car. So they have to go and find a, a gas station, and that leads us to the town of Ambrose. So, like, this is a, a constructed town. Like I said, this is where like the money in this movie all went. They built this fucking town. It's a you know mm-hmm. a triumph of set design trying to come up with this 
what i mean what i don't know what that style is it's like it's not necessarily like 50s it's very like los angeles looking yeah i just watched the rocketeer the other night it kind of feels like yeah that yeah. Uh, 30s kind of mm-hmm. that 30s old uh i'm gonna say old hollywood but just i don't know if it's not deco is it i don't know it is it a certain style deco. It's a i think deco, it might be yeah. deco it, it's yeah. kind of deco but not as ornate as you associate yeah i know it's very broad yeah. deco like yeah. you get you know different leveling and ridges and shit like that it's like but, low yeah. income deco <laughs> sure yeah it's, it's we had to construct it quick for this yeah. town deco yeah but it looks pretty cool but it looks, and yeah i mean and and the two characters go through it and so the it's a very vintage look yeah i guess the way that i read it right from the get-go was you know obviously like when they come in and it seems like it's kind of desolate but there's people looking out you know you see an old lady looking out through her mm-hmm. uh window mm-hmm. uh you, you see, walk in on a funeral this yeah. is the first of our b and e this is the first like these people are fucking menace to this town if they would just stay the fuck out they wouldn't have any problems <laughs> yeah we came like, to a pretty great conclusion at the end of this movie we'll get there but. yeah it, they walk in in a one room church house to a funeral interrupt and they just stay in there don't say shit don't back out like oh shit sorry it takes them so long to register that's, that's what they, were, they were like oh shit not right away they it, stood it there for a, a few it takes them a hot minute the yeah. guy has to like look at them and acknowledge like you shouldn't fucking be in here for yeah. that for it to register with them but like, i mean the first time that you saw this did you were at this point were you well i mean you watching it tonight holly were mm-hmm. you like uh no those people are all wax dummies in the pews or was this like because they they quick cut to i think like the the preacher is yes. standing there and he looks like he's eyeballing them yeah yeah no at this point i had not caught on that they were all wax okay mm-hmm. all right so this is i like okay. this you're a good barometer yeah, 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 yeah. thank you thank That's you nice. thank you so at what point did you become aware that the whole town was actually this facade everyone's dead all the people in the town that we see are wax well they're not wax they're wax covered corpses basically i was suspicious of the lady in the window okay we're all right there yep okay yep because you were like, because you're like, I've seen Home Alone. I've seen that. I know yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know this can be faked. Yeah, they've got animatronics or whatever. Yeah, there is one guy in the town. Obviously, that's what kind of uh, helps smooth this over and hide the fact that like it's an empty town. There's one guy in the church that actually comes out and talks to them, and this guy is Bo, right? Mm-hmm. Who's shockingly played by nobody. Like this should be yeah. someone famous, What's right? His name? Brian Van Holt. Is yeah, Brian Van Holt. Holt. You've seen him in. Very limited, a few things, but I have seen him before. What did we say? Cougar Town? Cougar Town, Cougar Town yeah. was the big one. When you mentioned him, I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, he was in that for like, oh, a, like a while. Oh, like a main character in Yeah, that? he yeah. is at like 93 episodes, so yeah, oh, he's yeah, like okay. every episode. Okay. Yeah, that was like his biggest thing. And sorry, that C- Cougar Town was before or after this? After this. After. After. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Yes, so yes, that's so. what I was trying to figure out. Like, what made the casting director cast him if everybody else is Budget. coming out of we some... spent it all on the cw actors and paris hilton so we gotta get somebody cheap for this role maybe because i think we all discussed that we're like his casting doesn't quite it's feel bad right for the movie fit. it's he straight up bad it's like not, it's, yeah this well, guy is not right for okay this role. but why are you saying that i'm just curious because i mean i didn't see him as he's basically playing i don't know what he's like he feels like he's got cowboy energy. Right. He <laughs> so, feels like he should be a little older. He feels, yeah, he doesn't. That's why there was one point and I was, when I was like, what year was it supposed to be at the beginning? Because I right. kept thinking like he doesn't seem like he's old enough. No, he doesn't feel old enough to be one of the kids from the cold open. Mm. And he's yeah. supposed to be. And he feels too young for that. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously you don't want to go the extreme other end of the spectrum of being too old. But like this guy, like he's not great in this role and it just doesn't fit with everybody else i don't understand like it has to be a budget thing or something that like this guy was willing to work for way cheaper than they wanted or something Mm. because everyone else is a star except this guy well and the i didn't recognize the other two friends uh from anything the guy who's always running around with the camera and paris hilton's boyfriend i recognize the friend was he abraham's he's almost on the wall actually to tell you the truth (laughs) this movie and the faculty he oh, needs one shit. more to be on the wall. You remember the faculty, <laughs> the boyfriend and girlfriend are always slapping each other and arguing and shit? No. He, oh, he's the guy. I'm the only one who might remember that movie <laughs> in great detail because it's great. But yeah, he's in that one. Okay. Yeah. All right. So he's uh, got two. Yeah. I mean, I guess I didn't see the same thing as far as like, you know, that he was out of place in the movie. It was just kind of the, I, it's, I assumed like you did that, that. I, I guess it would be a more recognizable actor, but something it, yeah. for how much this guy is involved in the movie, it yeah. should be someone recognizable. Yeah, you know, and who's got a little more? Who's I don't know, maybe a little more villainy or a little more personality, right? I mean, if you're villainy. gonna do this movie, what I thought he had villainy personality, I don't know, but that could be like he's just the heavy. 
you know, in the movie. But, yeah, and I think that's it. He's just the head. Yeah. Why, why, why he didn't bring anything to it? But he's also supposedly like play acting, you know, like because this is the whole thing is that they've been he's been he and his brother, right? Uh, Vincent is the deformed one, right? They were separated. Mm-hmm. Yes. And Vincent wears a wax mask and has long hair and, you know, is the killer. Basically. A long wig, yes. And then there's this whole, like, twisty thing where it's like, you know, at the beginning of the movie, we're shown that one of the twins is, like, crazy and the other one is, like, eating you know. Cheerios. Yeah, eating yeah. Cheerios, doing his own thing. And, like, well, clearly it must be the crazy psycho killer right. is the, the crazy one. But nope, it turns out a Bo is the crazy one, apparently. But, like, um, even if you cast, like, a Frank... Frank Grillo would have been a great choice for like this role. He's slightly older, but he's a good, solid like workman actor. He's slightly recognizable, but he's not going to take away from your CW stars. You know, like I, where did they find this guy? You know, like that's why I just, how did this guy end up yeah, here? I don't know. What do we want him to be? Because it's weird that he's like, he's the, he feels like he's dressed kind of like the preacher at, at when we get to the church, or at least yeah. that's yeah. what he feels like. Yeah. Yeah. Then he changes well, he into, feel, I guess, the mechanic stuff. Yeah, because the, the movie... Like, right, I don't know what it is. Like, he should part. be a cowboy or something. Like, it not... seems like he has to be the one who has the veneer of civility, right? Like, sure. if you met him, you wouldn't think, this guy's a crazy psycho killer. But right. that's, that's not how they start this movie. That, or right. that's not how they start that character. He's he's hot right out of the gate, you know? Like, he's he's an asshole right off the gate. Like, just coming out of the... Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so maybe, yeah, church, he's not like, kindly like no. Chuck Connors was. Right, Chuck Connors was been kindly off the yeah. bat, yeah. and then slowly and, and get Norman menacing. Bates was also yeah. right. The real a menacing bit of that going on too. Yeah, right that, in there. And that's maybe like one of the biggest flaws with this whole little fake town is that he doesn't have. If it's not him, it needs to be somebody else that's going to be a kindly person, right? You need at least one kindly person to like lure them in, make them feel safe, make them, right. you know. Right. And maybe this town could have benefited from like one or two more real people, you know? Maybe like, like I mean, it would have ended up being like, and they're all family at yeah, some point. It, yes, but it probably could have. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're already ripping off Texas Chainsaw. Just do it all the way, you know? Might like, as well, yeah. <laughs> like there's a diner or something and there's a waitress. And Who's real sweet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, this is, I think we're stealing directly from. Uh, chainsaw sequels <laughs> at this point, but still. But yeah, there's no. But like these people are constantly, constantly being told, "Get the fuck out! Nobody wants you here." There's no. As they well, yeah. As yeah. they continue to barge through yeah. every room in every there's, house, there's none of that deceptive, like, like trap niceness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. none yeah. of that. The, the fly trap. Yeah, yeah. Right? you have yeah. to lure yeah. them in yeah. with honey. But this is like, get out! I'll yeah. be there in a half hour. You know, that I thought was weird. It's like you're going to. So basically his motive, because he's like, I got to go back into the church and, you know, there's this funeral happening here and you have to I'll be with you in a half hour. The motive is to give them time to explore the titular attraction, which, which otherwise so it was like, stupid. how else are we going to get to the fucking house of wax? Right. I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. When they barged into the church, I forgot, like what they were doing because we've come so far this is from, like 45 the, minutes yeah, yeah. Long the journey. funny thing is is we're on time we're, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. On, time. We about, on time this is about how long it took them to get there yeah, yeah. it is a journey to get and to I, our... at that point i was like what are they doing again i don't remember why they're here we've gone so far from the football game right we started yeah. going to a football yeah game. like and there's fan belts and cars yeah. and camping on the side of the road right like, and then a paris hilton is in this movie but then Carcass she's not Pits. for 40 minutes like yeah they leave her out for a while I, a long time a i long feel time. like i feel like he was trying to do a hitchcock thing like oh they're going to the game and then it ends up they end up in the the house of wax you know but like there's so much doubling back there's so much going back and forth i know the same lo- three locations over and over yeah. and over yeah, again that For was sure. a problem mm-hmm. i think yes. I, that's the way i read it. it was like uh you know at some point when they're creeping around in the house you're like weren't they creeping around in this house like i mean he's setting right. up decent suspense sequences but it's like this is the third iteration of this. Right. And so yeah. much has happened before that, okay, we're still creeping around a house. Yeah. Like, they're, they're, you've seen people killed. You've lost a finger. Like, why are we still creeping around shit? Like, get right. out. Like, go somewhere. Do there something. is no reason they have to stay here, but they keep choosing to stay here. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. like, like, I was so frustrated when we went through the whole them busting in on the funeral scene. And then they were like, hey. And then they're standing on the, the steps of the porch and go, hey, you want to go in that house of wax? I was like, oh, my God. That's literally how we get here is one character just saying it to another. Mm-hmm. Why did we need all this lead up? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. oh, if that's all it takes is one saying to another, hey, let's go do this plot point. Yeah. Like, oh, mm-hmm. my God. A, what's some there's shitty a wax writing? Museum in this town. And yeah. the whole thing is made of wax. Everybody in it is wax. And then we find out Vincent's like 
coating people with wax in the basement. Yeah, yeah this so is where the abducting people production and, design kicks in because yeah. there's a whole. It's got a whole basement lair set up. I mean, there's candles. flames going. There's candles, candles everywhere. <laughs> candles, cauldrons. Yeah, there's a lot of industrial looking yes, shit. Pipes. Rusty that pipes. seems really pipes and pop- levers. problematic. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, have so I, much fire in this house. It really does. <laughs> right. For the candles on the stairs were stressing me out. Right. I was like, oh yeah, my I was gonna God. Say, I knew yeah. you wouldn't like that. Yeah. yeah. But this all that house that they actually live in too is also another one. Like this is a fucking nightmare. Yeah. There's just shit you gotta get through everywhere. Quarter's nest. Yeah. Every yeah. But he's also got, yeah. like you said, the wax contraption, which spray, which is spraying his victims with wax, which has got to be like boiling hot wax. Yeah. yeah, right. yeah. So this looks torturous. And they're so. naked, right? Yeah. 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 Naked and alive. Yep. And Show us some nudity. You already got the R rating. Give it mean, come on. Just into, go for it. And we almost got close with Paris Hilton. Kind of. I, don't know, just, I, mean, I mean, have it, we not seen enough at that that's point? That's what I'm saying. It seems like they're Do we making mean, the sex a tape nod out to the point. sex know, tape, right? right, by doing she's on like a, a, a found footage thing or whatever. Yeah. Um, Paris Hilton in this movie. Okay, so I guess this is the question, even though she's not the lead. Uh, what would you think of her performance in, as an actress in a horror movie? I've, I've seen, seen way worse. worse. It's, yeah. not ter- yeah, it's not terrible. <laughs> I've seen, it's way, worse. seen way worse. Yep. Yeah. Okay. For someone who's not an actor, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. And for this movie? Fine. Yeah, I know because yeah. I think like Works. the the thing about horror movies, and this might also be a point that we're going to talk about, but um, you know, it's like how well how do you tell if a person's a good actor in a horror movie? And a lot of times, like what's required of you is to basically be yourself, hang out, and you know, chum around with your friends, and then act scared, act scared. And so I was like, well, how how well am I believing that Paris Hilton is terrified out of her mind right here? And I'm like. Eh, not really, but I've also <laughs> seen other people. But also, she's not the problem with this movie. Yeah, yeah right, it's like yeah. other people have done that. But this happens a lot in this movie, that there's a lot of characters who are, like, they, they, the actors were not encouraged, and this is why I think it's, a, you know, mm-hmm. an actor can do whatever, what anything. But it, uh, it's up to a director to kind of tell them, like, this is how It's you up need to a director experience. to tell them, hey, you just got stabbed in the thigh. That probably hurts. Yeah, we want. Uh, we should Nobody probably, reacted should to any higher. of their injuries. <laughs> right, you might yeah. want to yeah. be, you know, <laughs> more in pain. Yeah, it's this like, is going to affect you for a couple hours. Like, yeah. let's see some of that. Nobody reacts to, like, massive injuries. No. It's, in some ways, it's almost like a play where, like, people will be standing five feet away from another person and act like they can't hear them. That happens yes. a lot in this movie. Right. Yeah. 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 Like, they're standing right next to the person talking, and they're like, I'm not looking at you. I can't hear you. You know? Like, yeah. it, that scene where uh, Alicia Cuthbert's chained up underneath the I, the pool table, uh, the gas station, and she oh, is able to, like, get free. Just not smack themselves. Yeah, yeah. she's <laughs> able to get free, and she has, like, a piece of this, like, hospital bed chained to her arm. And she sticks her little finger up through the that grate. That was the funniest. That I, was a trailer th- moment. The 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 shears yes. coming for the finger. I remember that. Yeah. Um. And uh, sticks her finger up through the gate grate while uh, Bo is talking to that's what Chad she wants Michael him to Murray. See. Yeah. Just like, like see the finger. Hello. Not take the big metal thing you have and bang it. Yeah. Yeah. Make some noise when he's like in <laughs> right. like five feet away. Well, from she him. can hear their whole conversation like clear as day, but he can't hear even with her mouth glued shut. Can't hear her screaming. Even yeah, though he's yeah. right on top of her, yeah, like yeah. because they established that like there's the Marilyn Manson song is supposedly too loud that you can't hear but over it's it. Gone. But it's gone from the soundtrack yeah. at that point. So I think that the film, it, you know, like the characters are still supposed to be hearing this loud music, but we don't, right? You know, so yeah, it's like, but but she can hear everything they're talking yeah, about. That's right. what doesn't yeah. make sense. She can hear their we hear from her perspective, and it's like echoing down into the room she's in. Right, we can hear everything they're saying. And yeah, and he makes the no point sense. to turn it on. The, the music and close the door like it seems like this is their purpose like yeah. you're right like it's sh- they think it's drowning her out oh, but there so is stupid. like uh there, i guess um what the movie does is there is this accent on brutality pain and suffering even though we're saying that the pain uh, that the actors are portraying is maybe not as uh, uh authentic or genuine or it doesn't read as like oh my god but i mean there is a lot of focus on tendons achilles heel being <laughs> yes. cut uh, you know, I yeah, mean, the actual injuries are effective. Yeah, she, yeah. Alicia Cuthbert gets her little finger snipped off in the grate, and then is. he keeps it and puts it in his pocket, so she's never getting that back. Yeah, you get your you get boiling hot wax applied to you, and then somebody peels your face off. Yeah, oh, oh, you know, that was your gross. skin this, actually uh, down this, to the muscle. Not only gross, it's also the mo- it is the most horrifying thing. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, dude. Oh, I'm sorry, and he just gets like he keeps. Oh, I'm, like he's doing it on purpose. He's ripping his yeah. face off. Yeah. Uh oh, we get uh Paris gets I think like uh it goes through her the like the bone of her or the uh the heel of her foot. 
Yeah. Right? She gets stabbed from yeah, under. Yeah, knife comes up. Oh, before she gets impaled on it. And yeah. even that went on, like, in a way. See, I love those kind of scenes where uh, there's the impact of the uh, instrument that kills you. And then there's the follow up, which mm-hmm. makes it even worse. Yeah. yeah. It's like, that's yeah. what you yeah. have to. That's the old Tom yeah. Savini trick. Yeah. It's like, bam, impalement. Oh. Then you fall on the fucking thing and it goes even further into you. Know, like, and you just Ooh. hear it squeak through the blood <laughs> yeah. as it comes out the other end. Yeah. But, a- but the, Bo has superhuman strength because he takes this pipe. Or with Vincent. A, yeah, Vincent, Vincent has yeah. the pipe with the pointy end on it, yeah. throws it through two car windows. So he has, he's a dead shot, too. He can hit her. Yeah. Yeah. At a distance through to, through a car, through her forehead, comes out the other side, this metal pipe from a distance. She threw it so head. hard. Did that, no, that's, ever that's, that's like show. Olympian javelin throwing <laughs> right what? there. Yeah. That's insane. Like, why yeah. are you sculpting, dude? Get in the Olympics or something. Yeah. Right. So Make we're country supposed proud. to believe that this fucker like built this entire town and this house and sculpted all of these. Because people. he had abusive parents? Yep. Yep. To make his mama proud. Mama be proud of Because mom was a wax a sculptor, right? Yeah. Yep. Who died, and they have her body, of course, like laid out in the church and mm-hmm. forever. Mm-hmm. Trudy, right? Mm-hmm. Trudy's yep. Wax Museum. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that there is like, uh, just speaking about the brutality in the movie, it's like that also is like, maybe this is the quintessential like 2000s movie where it brings it, like we're saying, it maybe, because I was going to say it was the, it was Texas Chainsaw. Maybe this is the one that has everything. I, I this has a so. little bit of hostile Texas Chainsaw, like all of yeah, these things. Yeah, it's the things. synergy. Synergy yeah, of the movie. Yeah, characters yeah. that you can't stand. Me. Yeah, yeah. Just all- I, this is it. I think we just, this is the movie. Okay, so this movie, though, so was I understanding this correctly in that they don't like, it's not like Texas Chainsaw where they're going and trapping people, right? They're not like giving them flat tires and stuff. It's just if people happen to walk into their town, they're getting turned into wax figures, right? But they That's are directing them, I guess, on the roadway. That was the okay. only thing. But yeah, if you walk in. but So but- what's wrong with that? If they're just minding their own business, living their weird little freak life <laughs> and, and not bother anybody unless you trespass and be an E on them like these people did, yeah. what's the problem? This is true. We did figure out that our main characters were the villains of this movie. Oh, they and absolutely also, are. And also that they've murdered more people than the serial killers in this yeah, movie. Yeah, they do. Because in trying to save the one guy who's been waxed, they accidentally twist his fucking head they, off. Right, they yep. break his neck and that's gone. They, they peel, tore off Padalecki's face. Yeah. The He's people gone. that got shot in the movie theater when he was trying to find her? Were the wax figures alive? in the movie theater? I mean, they I got th- their brains well, blown. I thought, yeah. so. I thought they were already dead. I think they were yeah. already dead. Yeah. Yeah. But still, like... Is this like, okay, but this is like the difference between like the 2000s era, because I've been watching a lot, like I said, of the 80s horror movies where the characters are generally, it feels like more likable and yes, relatable. absolutely. In this one, it's like, are you supposed to relate to the guy who's like a petty criminal? And yeah. the, 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 like everybody else is kind of just assholes to each other. It's like, how are these people friends? I don't know. I think, then, it, I, Colin, was, I think it's just beauty. I, yeah, I was like, there was, a, there was a weird time in the late 90s, early 2000s that it was like, they just had to be pretty and they famous. Just, they just right. had to be pretty and could yeah. act good enough. Well, well that been, that and they're just vehicles to be tortured, so you don't need to get to know true, them. You're just here to watch stars, them get tortured. The yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it's better to see beautiful people get tortured in some way. No, that's I think more it's horrifying. I think like more I think that it's more enjoyable to watch them get tortured if they're not likable. If okay. they're assholes, yeah. you're like, yeah, fucking get them. Right, because you're but, cheering for the kills, yeah, right. which is but, just but they a weird also... position to have. Then you're right. not afraid, right? But, they all... we, you, yeah. the but that's, like, that's the Saw working. movies, right? That's the Hostel movies, yeah, right? That is torture right. porn. That is the 2000s, yeah. I think. Yeah. Like, yeah. They always give you kind of It's like very post-Iraq you know. War. It's, it's We found out what was happening in Guantanamo Bay, and look what our movies did. You well, know? I always thought it was like, the yeah that post the Daniel Pearl killings. Yeah. Yes, that, exactly. That brutality, you know, came into like the hostels and all mm-hmm. that stuff. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Got to keep a, up with real life. There's mm-hmm. another. But you were talking about like the fact that it's all beauty. There's a there's in both uh, Texas Chainsaw. There's like and this, and a lot of them. It seems like there's this kind of vanity to both the um, the killers and the victims, right? Mm. I remember in Hostel, a girl gets her eye plucked out. It's worse to ha- to have her eye plucked out than live. She throws herself in front of a train. And right. this one, Vincent, has a wax face, and he gets it dinged. And he, like, spends a lot of the movie, it feels like, I got to fix the disfigurement yes. on my wax, you know, so I look good. Uh, yeah, okay, that's a sidebar. So the climax of this movie that we have to yes. talk about, because if you remember anything about house of wax i'm gonna guess that it's this massive uh like final scene sequence of the movie yes and (laughs) just more proof that this is the movie this is the this is our house burning down at the end of the movie trope but 
done the best? Like, <laughs> because it's a whole actual house of wax? Like, this is a hell of a set piece, I will say. It, it made me nervous because, like, the actors are clearly walking on slippery surfaces for a lot of this movie. And I was like, ooh, the liability of, like, they just got a step wrong and they're blowing their I ACL how, well, out or they're cracking their head open. Because I heard they use a lot of peanut butter for. for but the, still, you can people. slip oh, on that. that? I, th- yeah, for I think for a lot of it, they said they use peanut butter for most okay, of it when they're digging through stuff. Okay, because that's great to know, because I was yeah. like, oh, what, yeah. are they actually using, but I mean, what do you use for melty wax? Peanut butter. Yeah. That's fantastic, because they're yeah. stepping like, on. I was wondering that, too. It just yeah. looks so slippery, it made me nervous. I was it like, oh, my God. Like, well, it's like peanut butter with, like, KY jelly or something yeah. spread out all over the, <laughs> the thing or whatever. But they have, like, there's a staircase. Right, that's all melting because the fire starts yes. and the whole building's just melting. And it's doing. And there's a fight scene. <laughs> there's a fight scene, and it's it's doing everything you want, everything you didn't know you wanted with a melting house of wax. Like, like if you things were ever... are getting through the floor, like people fall down, they just start sinking through the floor slowly. Flames. It's are like quicksand and yeah. a fire at and the same and, time. Right, and those noises of that just the, the, yeah. the yeah. wax. I was yes, saying the foley artist, you know, had a great time on this. <laughs> but I was like, you know, when you were a kid and you just you can't help yourself but play with like the melty wax on a candle. Yeah. Yes. But it's a whole movie, like yeah. a whole scene, <laughs> and they're just, of just everything is squishy. Yeah, and they're doing they're digging through walls, they're falling through wax beds, floors are going away. Like this, this was is, so goddamn satisfying. It was, yeah, as you said it. at the beginning of the movie, like when they walked yeah. into the house of wax, <laughs> Holly's like. What if there was a fire? Yeah. <laughs> there a fire. And, and there then was. And then we were like, this this better fucking end with a big fire in this house. And it fucking does. Oh, it does like it. this is I mean, oh. this is the best part of the movie. Like this is this is where the it budget is went. So like, sad. The way they get out is so stupid, but it makes so much sense. Like I hate that it makes sense because it's so dumb. <laughs> like I hate that it probably works in like it probably logically makes sense in real life. That sure. they crawl like they go because they go upstairs for some uh, reason. A house is on fire, you go up, upstairs. Yeah. yeah. Up yeah. Um and there's like at the House of Wax sign at the top of the building and they crawl through it and just wait for it to melt down low enough that they can crawl out. I feel like it's so... It's, it's so, so fucking stupid. It's so stupid obvious that if they did this on Mythbusters, I guarantee they'd all just go, yeah, that would work. Yeah. And they yeah. wouldn't even yeah. do it. I know, because yeah, I was obviously. I was curious. I'm like, uh, you know, all the whole thing's falling down. Like, what's the weight of this? You know, coming right. out? Is it going to crush you or whatever? You start but, thinking of the physics. Like, yeah. they're going to drown yeah. in melting wax? Ugh, that'd be oh, horrible Oh, that's horrifying. Go. Yeah. The foundations Whoa. of this building must be, like, three stories deep for the amount that it, like... And right. then, then you have the boiling wax that's turned to liquid, like, rising up like yeah. a... Flat. Right. Dude, it's <laughs> yeah. as, wonderful. As... <laughs> as it we is get something else. It, it is. is. I don't know that I've ever seen anything... It is, like it's the ultimate. It went it's for it. House it went for and it. we get, I mean, this is where we get uh, a tad heavy handed with this movie as we do dispatch of our bad guys. Um, Oof, Bo, yeah. Bo is beaten to death by Alicia Cuthbert, like right. severely with a bat to takes, the head. Takes far too long. Yes, takes far too long. Oh. Like after two hits to the head with a baseball bat, full swings. You're like, done. Oh, God, You're at least you, unconscious. That you should are, be it. You are done. Yes. Yeah. So he gets killed. He uh, ends up melting through the floor, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Um, then we finally get rid of uh, Vincent. And he ends up, he ends up landing on the back of his brother, and they are reconnected to to where that they were separated at birth, with his the wax. front face and his yeah. back sealed face. in a wax tomb. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean that's brilliant. <laughs> maybe not brilliant, but satisfying. I'll give it that. I mean, I mean it, that it's just the ending thematically consistent. I guess, yeah. like you said, is it, it? It works because you read it as like, okay, well, at least you carried through. But maybe there's the you hit it. A, a oh no, they hit it too hard. Too oh times. yeah, way like it was very hard. And this is where the movie should stop. Should just be oh, done, yeah, yeah, yeah. end oh, here. No, I was totally because we had this conversation last, <laughs> last week. week. Grizzly, yeah. like when the guys are dead, like they stop. come out. You're done. Roll credits. Burning, roll credits. I, yeah, roll we credits. don't care about anything else. <laughs> don't need a wrap up. But roll yet, credits. No, that, that's not the way of the 2000s. No. No. no, because we have this thing where like the the. The sheriff comes out and he has to give us information. You gotta like, get that scream ending with, with the cops outside. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the morning after the yeah. Halloween two ending, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 all yeah. the cops. And then the the sheriff comes up and I'm like, and so well, what you'll get the information. We didn't find nobody. Yeah. <laughs> what information did he impart that we were like, Oh man, I wish I knew that. It uh, looks like those Sinclair boys have been grabbing people off the road for years. I'm like, we know that because we found their cell phones, their cars, their, you know, all the remnants yeah, we of know their this. life. We got it. Yeah. <laughs> You're hitting us again with a point that we already know. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and then we get hit with another point. Yeah. yeah. This is, oh my, 
It's so <laughs> out of nowhere. It's just like, Sheriff, Trudy didn't have two children. She had three. Like, it's coming from, like, <laughs> How deputy, do they know this? Right, uh, so they, this they ran them through the telex or whatever to Washington or but, whatever. But, but that, what does that mean to anybody? It doesn't like they mean had anything. Three. It shouldn't, so what? It, that's There's what another saying. one. It shouldn't mean anything. Yeah, and so it, it turns out it's the harmless us. fucking uh, roadkill dude. And I'm like, okay. Does, right. he, does he know? Does he know? Right. Yeah, does, does he, he even, know? <laughs> this, movies of this time did this, Ugh. though. I don't know if you guys saw the Hillary Swank movie, The Reaping. It had a very, yeah, very, Dark very... Dark Castle movie. It had a very... A very similar ending, <laughs> very almost identical ending wow. to where you were like, "Why did I just watch this movie?" You just yeah. undid the whole movie by stating this. Like, oh. yeah, I mean, the only thing was like, well, he did recommend that they go to Ambrose, but even still, you know, it's like it seemed like that's a throwaway thing. You yeah. really didn't need that right. at all. I don't think you need his character in the is, movie. Is the thought is it implying that like it's going to start back up again because there's still one left? It's well, it's it's 2005, so you got to have a twist and you got to have an open for a sequel. Yeah, nope. yeah, but the, there you go. Like we established that the sculptor of the the wax artist is Vincent, right? He's the guy who built everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Bo's the crazy one who kills everyone. Yeah. yeah. And the other dude, I don't know what his part in, in it is. So what if it goes on? Oh, he's he's also part of the crazy clan. Explored, is he crazy? Explored in the sequel. Right. Uh, that they were there's hoping so to have. so much opportunity there, Colin. How come it didn't have a direct-to-video sequel like House on Haunted Hill did, which was the interactive House on Return but to House on Haunted Hill? Was this a Hill? profitable movie? Did it make money? It was not. I was going to say, I stole kind of a page from your book. This was not. It made a lot on uh, rentals. Gotcha. I think it made like $40 million in rentals. Like, it Jesus. was popular. I it believe came out. that. <laughs> it made like $17 million here and another 30-something million overseas, Ooh, I think. Or I maybe can imagine it's Friday overseas. night. You're going to Hollywood video. What are you going to pick up? Right. You get House of Wax. But on a $40 million Paris, budget, Paris, yeah. Paris Hilton dies in that yeah. Oh, my God. We watch the, yeah, the fact that you know that it's like that's the Paris Hilton movie. Yep. It's yeah. like this the cultural seepage of this movie. <laughs> but I feel I love horror. cultural seepage. <laughs> but, but that's a great band name, <laughs> cultural seepage. I feel like that speaks though to Copyright, how much they probably spent on marketing though. Like the marketing oh, yeah, budget for this movie thing. was huge on top of the yes, production this was budget. everywhere. That's another yeah. reason they didn't make mm -hmm. back. It was mm -hmm. bomb at the box mm -hmm. office. A lot of marketing. I remember the trailer where they would pause the movie and the text would just come on screen one time, see Paris Hilton die, like in the middle of the trailer, and then they would resume the trailer. Like, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. It was on TV yeah, constantly. Yeah, that was a big thing. Yeah. yeah. Weird. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Cultural seepage. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I guess we're going to go around the room and tell you if uh, we would recommend that you watch House of Wax. Uh, but first of all, we're going to answer some of your mail, and in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, and his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Gore. I call him Gore sometimes. Is that melty or? He's always melting. Eye, or he's wearing an eye mask or a wax mask. Wax he looks, mask. He looks like he's been melting for 15 years. I mean, I think it's yeah. uh, I think it's kind of rude to bring it up, Colin. He has, actually, he so, has uh, a coating, but I just don't know what it is. Would be a little nicer to go. No one got to point out his every flaw. Okay. Uh, duly noted. So uh, we're going to tell you how you can uh, participate on this interactive portion of our show. All you got to do is follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash I at Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Mark Harrison writes in and says, was this film the cause of Paris Hilton's decline of relevance? She no. was never relevant. But. I think I think it was inevitable. Like you yeah, can I mean, only a eh, celebrity is hard to maintain for anybody. Yeah, you can't ride yeah. that high and just not go down. Yeah. It's not yeah. possible. They capitalized on her popularity yes. that was already. I don't like, think this did naturally anything. On, this movie did not bring her down. down. Let's put it that way. Uh Kryptonian Orphan says, God help me, but Paris wasn't that bad in this. I mean, she I was at Agreed. the height yeah. of her reality star success during this time. And what reality TV, but scripted TV anyway. So any, in many ways, she was a seasoned actress. He used uh, quotes. Yeah. Uh, the leaked porno notwithstanding. That would be, uh, yeah. One Night in Paris. She got <laughs> seasoned in that movie, I believe. Mm, it's, you could pass on that. As far as celebrity sex tape, yeah, so it's not great. pass on that one. It's you not good. It's really one. boring. It's very boring. It's really yeah, it's boring. Artie64109 says, I 
freaking love this damn movie. You guys should do a top 10 ranking of your favorite remakes. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm totally for down that. for that. I'm not prepared for that tonight. No, that I was going to say, yeah, you can't bring this up on show. No, I'm not I prepared for that tonight. Of my head. We can do like a bonus episode or something. Sure, like I'd love right, to. There you go. On yeah. our Patreon, which we don't have yet, but we should. That's <laughs> yeah. a good uh, idea. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, oh, wait. I mean, what? You got uh, the thing? Right, the fly. Why are you giving away oh, content for free? Okay, Colin, sorry, Colin, uh, Colin, Colin paywall, pay paywall, right, paywall, paywall. Pay uh, uh, Michael Whitaker says, "All I remember about this movie is that Paris Hilton's in it, and it was at the height of her popularity. <laughs> Not that yep. her being in it would have sold me on a remake of what is generally regarded as a really good classic horror movie, anyway." How is it, Colin? Is it a yeah, I don't think I've seen your. Oh yeah, I've never seen House it. of Wax. Well, I mean, it's like the 3D movie too. So, oh yeah, yeah, it was the first Vincent like Price, right. 3D movie. Wasn't it was it? the first big budget like success uh, 3D movie. Well, you got to go back and listen to our show. Aside from the 3D flaw. Oh, I love the movie. Go- yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> it's actually a remake. They did it once before. Fay Ray was in the mystery. original. Oh yeah, that was mystery, mystery in the Wax Museum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. okay. Fay Ray, I didn't know that. And then Dario Argento produced like a remake of that called Wax Mask uh, in Italy. So, but that one. That one looks fucking not, weird. Not, not as good. Okay. Uh, Mark Zidane says, my fondest memory of this movie was when I saw it in the theaters on a base in Okinawa. The standing ovation to the death of Paris Hilton <laughs> by 200 Marines is the equivalent to a five-star critics review. That's amazing. And that's how you support the troops. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. She was just hated. There's oh, yeah. Of- well, Everyone <laughs> loved that death. Colin, I start. I start to feel a little bad for her sometimes, know, especially especially, sure, yeah. especially after that like recent documentary and all that horrible stuff that came out about her childhood and stuff. Yeah. But then I think about the fact that she used to wear that shirt that said "Stop being poor." Yep. And I don't feel bad uh, anymore. True. Yeah. You know. Very true. Yeah. yeah. She was awful. Yep. Yeah. Well, Ed Snyder says, I can't wait to hear this episode. I've been a fan since I saw it in the theater, and I'm happy it's recently been acknowledged a lot. More recently, now you guys are covering it, and I can't wait to hear it. By the way, this isn't meant to be a slick plug, but I've been mentioning you guys on a recent, recently on my show, the Film Effect podcast. I love what you guys do for the genre, and again, I can't wait to hear this. It's going to be hot. Ooh, <laughs> it's indeed, hot. Topical sir. reference. Thank you. Yes. That's hot. And that's hot. That's hot. And thanks for plugging us. <laughs> I think you got that down. There Thank you go. You. I thought Paris <laughs> was in the room with us. Uh, Travis Legler says, "Ah, uh, the Paris Hilton and Sam from Supernatural." remake mm-hmm. i remember this area uh, this area of films as when i first hit the i'm sick of remakes area mm-hmm. then hollywood gave me countless returns to that feeling even yeah. to this day it's true yeah. Fuck hollywood. <laughs> uh, carson snar <laughs> says i remember renting this one with a few friends we had a blast watching it making fun of parts and being genuinely creeped out by some scenes it's a fun movie to watch with a group of people it's like a haunted house carnival ride just mm. some weird and fun entertainment. Solid. All right. Adam Kaler says, while a fun enough movie, although I wished it was House of Peanut Butter rather than Wax, the <laughs> movie felt like it was part of a bunch of cookie cutter horror movies which came out after Scream that all kind of looked the same. The only remakes I ended up actually liking were Vanilla Sky and, for some reason, House on Haunted Hill. Freak Show Family. What remakes do you actually like? They came out this is post the question. Scream. Post Scream. House on a Haunted Hill. I, that was 99, yeah. I actually I th- like the Hitcher remake with Sean Bean. I thought, I we, actually were, like I thought we weren't doing this. Yeah. I thought yeah. we were doing well, this. Two he's, people he's, asked. He said post Scream. That's very right. different than top 10 remakes of all time. Those are two very different yeah. questions. Yeah. I'm going to throw in Evil Dead then. Evil, oh, the Evil, Evil Dead's Dead, great, yeah. That, yeah. I think, I mean, you can check out my letterbox list, but I actually ranked that as the best horror movie of that decade. The Evil it's Dead very remake, good. So it's a very good movie, and it, the expectation it had to overcome. Yes, you know, very true. Better than the original, some might. Oh shit! Okay, so uh, the original is a classic. You're the one talking, dude. dude, dude okay. it's chocolate uh, and peanut butter. I love them both. Yeah. I can watch them together. You know, it's true. like it's true. Well, Giovanni Regis's life says it's an odd duck of a movie, surprisingly earnest for a slasher reboot with solid gore and a heavy 2005 watermark. Mm-hmm. Has more in common with the Saw movies than the OG House of Wax. Mm-hmm. Interesting how American slashers fush- first took from the Italians and then from the French. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, I know that they borrowed heavily from the Italians. Mm-hmm. Yes. The French. What did we take from the French? The extremism. Oh, yeah. shit. The, the French, new the French, French extremity. Yep. That was yep, yep, peaking yep, yep. at this when time, was too. Tension. Yeah. yeah. That oh, was, that was 90. No, that was 2006. That was, no, that was, that was like 2000. Oh, shit. Was Four. that 0203? 
It was somewhere like right around there. Yeah. yeah. But there was also inside cachet. Yeah. There was right. um, all kinds of stuff at this point. Yeah. Funny even. games had come out almost twice at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That was 2000. Yeah. No, you're right. Oh, that's, I didn't even think about that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you're right. That extreme, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. you know, that we yeah, t- yeah. did for the remakes was a blend of that with the French. Okay. So DJ Dog Manfish says, what kind of Yelp review would you give for this museum? I mean, it's it's telling the truth. It is a house of wax. I give it. It gets yeah. it gets plus marks for actually being made out of wax. Yeah, yeah. that is yeah. like all a, you got to see this if fucking you, movie. Uh, this this house made out of wax. Yeah, when you walk in and think like it's just a wax museum, just like a few figures that aren't of famous people, you're like what the fuck? This is so lame. But then when you realize the entire place is made of wax, yeah. even the plates, even the piano, that's impressive. Yeah. Which I'm all, not entirely sure how that works, but all no. houses of wax should be made of wax. Yeah. going yes. forward. I mean, Obviously. yeah. No, the piano is impossible. All right. Uh, (laughs) Last week, we watched a movie called Grizzly. Mark Zidane writes in again. He says, I loved this as a kid. I remember watching it with my dad after begging him to rent it for me at our local blockbuster, along with Crater Lake Monster. Recently watched the sequel that was just released. And wow, what a piece together. Literally piece of shit. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to have to check out the sequel at some point. Oh, I was going to say, thank you for saving us. for Because yeah. we watched the trailer, I think, after yeah. we watched yeah, Grizzly, oh. and it was like, it was wow. ridiculous, <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, Apple Eva says, geez, I wanted to say that I saw this back in the theater way back then. Does a woman get done in by a waterfall? Yeah. You know what? She does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's going to be a sexy time? It is not. It's not. No. It's it not. turns out that scene was actually shot twice. One with her topless for a European, yep. uh, but huh, it never. We don't have that footage. Uh, Sean, you missed it. She's, okay. she's 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 literally like, oh, I'm just gonna you know take off my clothes and in the get middle in, of my and, shift at work. In the middle of my shift at work and get in this stream. And her boyfriend's like, All right, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, a big grizzly glove comes in and grabs her underneath the water. And oh, she's wearing oh. a flesh colored bra, so she looks topless, but she's not. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. I'm sorry I missed it. Yeah. Well, Spruill2176 says, uh, Grizzly is one of my favorite Jaws-inspired films. I can't yeah. wait to hear your take. Well, you should be able to hear it by now. That episode is widely available wherever podcasts are found. There you go. And now. There it is. We're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, House of Wax, starting with Holly. Holly gets to go first. <laughs> tonight, Holly, uh, what did you think about 2005? House of Wax. Um. Well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say, for the wax meltiness at the end, mm. I'm recommending it. Just, just for the delicious, satisfying, squishy wax. That's enough for me. But yeah, no, the rest of it, honestly, not nearly as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I've just heard nothing but bad things about this movie, but it was actually pretty enjoyable. Obviously, the acting sucks. There's no character development that matters or makes any sense but it's fun there's a lot of gore there's a lot of uh fun kills it gives you all of those horror tropes that you like even if they're all ripping off other movies like it just it delivers you know so yeah squishy wax check tropes check blood and gore check i don't know what else you want melty fun. wax figures <laughs> yeah we also get that yeah yeah like m- wax corpses that are like melting like it's it's a good time it's a good time <laughs> so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna recommend it michaela what did you think uh i mean i was a sophomore in high school when this movie came out and i remember everyone talking about it and it was just like the thing to see and um i went and saw it in theaters at the time and i have not seen it since this is my first time revisiting it and i didn't retain very much of it um but that was a terrible time in American history. It was a terrible time to be a teenager. It was a terrible time in American pop culture. It was just bad. And that being said, I still like revisiting it through the lens of like film and, and pop culture. Um, And so this is the ultimate time capsule movie for that time. Like, like we talked about all the synergy, all the different things. They're just like, Throwing the all, they're throwing all the music. We didn't even talk we about didn't the even music. Talk about the music. But there's My Chemical Romance. There's Disturbed. There's Marilyn Manson. There's every, everything you could want from this oh. time. It's a nice blend of like new metal transitioning into like the emo phase. It's about to take over, and it's it is a time capsule of all those things aggressively <laughs> more than any other movie Ooh, from this time. Time cap, an aggressive yeah. time aggressive capsule. Nostalgia. Aggressive no, 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 no. nostalgia. An aggressive time capsule of cultural seepage. Yeah, oh. yeah. There we go. And 
I mean, I love revisiting a time capsule, whether it's my, I have attachment to it or not. I just love a time capsule movie. Uh, I think Grizzly, in a way, was also like a time capsule movie last week. I was like, this is what camping was like in the 70s, you know? Like, um, and I agree with Holly. I think like as much as like I, we gripe and have issues with this movie, I think the fact that it committed to a literal house of wax melting Mm -hmm. in the third act makes it worth watching and makes everything else redeemable mm-hmm. it does um, a lot of heavy lifting yeah it? it really <laughs> does and like it's expensive it's a big budget some of the cgi looks a little rough that's to be expected for a 16 year old movie mm-hmm. so i think i'm gonna have to recommend it just because like i don't think we like i don't think we're making time capsule movies right now i think we're actually in the opposite where we're making movies that we hope like will stand the test of time and mostly thinking of like in Marvel movies of yeah. a sense, like I don't think those will feel time capsule. Or we've got like inaccurate time capsules. Mm-hmm. Yes, like yeah, the, like the bright and shiny yeah. 80s. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a few yeah. movies that may have just come out on yeah. Netflix. No, no one is you. no one is capturing today. Everyone's uh-huh. reminiscing in the past and yeah. stuff yeah. they're creating yeah. now. And they're so, doing it wrong. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's, it's wrong. revisionist history. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so this is an honest portrayal of the time yeah and whether the that ugly truth <laughs> yes <laughs> and whether that works for you or not Put that on the front an honest portrayal of the time <laughs> whether that works for you or not that's up to you but for me i it works and so i would recommend it colin what do you think well the irony is like i've seen this movie several times obviously i have a, a copy of it you because do. i think you know the uh, what i was going into this tonight because i'd seen it before and i'm like well what am i going to say about this later and I thought I was going to recommend it based on the production value alone, <laughs> you know, because I mean, you know, if you're supposed to leave with a good closer, this does, mm-hmm. this is yep. a sequence. The burning wax house is something that, I mean, just from a visual standpoint, I guess is, uh, something to be celebrated in the annals of film history. <laughs> um, <clears throat> pardon me. The, lead up to it unfortunately it's like yeah i mean it has a lot of the problems that uh that we've been talking about the characters are just kind of i don't know cynical maybe is the best way the 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 way that the the filmmakers think that the audience is going to relate to them these are Mm -hmm. your relatable characters i'm Mm -hmm. like jesus that's a cynical way to approach your audience you know uh to give them basically what i would say are are unlikable characters for Mm -hmm. the most part Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't think it executes, um, it's thriller sequences very well. I think, uh, the director obviously got a lot better as he, you know, went forward in his career, but technically I think it's a very well-made movie. However, this conversation that we're having tonight has kind of opened my eyes to the fact that this was. Uh, I think maybe of any other movie that I, cause like I said earlier, I was going to say it was. Texas Chainsaw Massacre would be the one I would hold up as the example of like what the horror movie was as a cultural artifact in the two thousand in the two mid two thousands. But now I think it's too, it's House of Wax because mm-hmm. I mean, like we said, mm-hmm. we were hitting a. It has all those pieces of you know we were yeah we were into the bolt cutter movies you know mm. we were into um you know the found footage movies we were into this kind of celebrity culture thing that was going on. We were into the remake movies. It's like all of this and the musical mm-hmm. stylings yes. and all. This, it's like it's all collected. It's the everything <laughs> bagel House seasoning of, of horror. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, but that way, I think even saying that, you know, these the, the, the that the characters are unlikable is That's also it. endemic yeah. of yes. this area. This <laughs> is the example. Yes. This is what horror movies were in the mid 2000s. Um Aside from all the like J horror remakes, right, but they were yeah. even kind of, you know, that was going on, I guess, at this time and the French extremism. Um, but yeah, this is what American horror was, I think, in uh, in the mid 2000s. And so as a cultural relic, if you want to just you know, like, you know, jump back in time, see what that was. House of Wax. So, yeah, I guess I'm going to recommend it. Uh, <laughs> Sean, what do you think? I am. I'm very surprised at your reactions. I'm surprised <laughs> at my reaction to this movie. Um Bringing this tonight, I'm like, woof, I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this As movie. you're watching it, you're saying? Or? No, beforehand. Beforehand, I'm like, House of Wax, I wanted to revisit it because like we all said, it's been 15 years since I've seen this movie. And I remember it being such a big thing. But watching it tonight, like, it all came back. And like I said, and like we were discussing, I think we realized this is the movie of the 2000s. Mm-hmm. And I'm, 
we found it. Like this is it. And <laughs> yeah, Done. there's what? <laughs> Done. Done. Um, I mean, it does obviously it's got its problems. Like, I don't think our main villain's too great. Um, but and like we said about the characters, but I mean the way we we see that in our heads, like, yeah, that's part of it too. Um, the music and everything, uh, yeah, I think as, like, like we, oh, I can't believe I'm saying this about House of Wax. As a cultural touchstone, <laughs> House of Wax is that, is the movie of the 2000s. Uh, I think you have to see it. Like, it's got problems, don't, don't get us wrong, but, I mean, you're gonna feel a lot watching this movie, and it's gonna take you back, and mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. gives you all that stuff from then, mm-hmm. and I'll, I think a lot of people like that. Um, and even if you don't, it's it's gonna make you feel things, like, and that ending, holy shit. Like, that is, that's a great ending. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to recommend House of Wax. Wow. That is freak show that approved. Is freak show House approved. of Wax. I was not expecting <laughs> that no, tonight. That's surprising. But <laughs> I think we're saying it's, it's worthy of a uh, rediscovery. Oh, my God. The Paris Hilton movie. Wow. All right. And I think this week it has just been reissued in a collector's edition Blu-ray from Shout there Factory. Yep. There you go. Uh, wow. Okay, so uh, you have to watch it. That's the rule. You have to. Yeah, it's yeah, uh, Freak Show approved. House of Wax. So next week we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Holly. What are we doing next week? Uh, next week we're going to watch another movie that's probably a cultural. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Uh. Uh. Well, it's, it's a mark in time. It is a mark in time. We're going to be watching 1998's Godzilla. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> All right. the, the Matthew Broderick Godzilla. Oh, man. Okay. All right. The, the Roland Emmerich. <laughs> his foot Dean is Devlin. as big as this bus. Okay. <laughs> That's, size does matter. Godzilla <laughs> on the Freak Show next week. So until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.